Hello, my name is Zachary Freeman, and I apologize for the audio quality and the length of what I'm about to post on YouTube. Um, I know very well that most of you are not going to watch all the videos in the sequence, especially since most of them are 30 minutes long, but I just got done recording two hours of audio uh, attempting to chronicle what I've been through and decided to give an attempt at a quick overview which is of an overview so a summary of a summary none of which will do justice to what I've experienced so in 2016 I was sexually assaulted at Oglethorpe University by my at the time girlfriend uh, I reported it shortly thereafter and I was told in no uncertain terms that I should keep quiet about it or uh, I would be punished you know, it would be it was made to be known that it would, something bad would happen to me. They were right. Uh, I uh, continued to pursue justice, and after I officially reported it, I was defamed, harassed, threatened, stalked, and as I reported more and more of the behavior by other students, um, I was coerced out of my private lease agreement, not a dorm made homeless, um, suffered gaslighting from the administration of Oglethorpe University and the student body, um, was ignored, belittled. And this has been a continuing problem for over a semester. And uh, there have been multiple violations of the university's conduct code, including defamation, harassment, stalking. And every time I've brought it to your attention or Dean Paula's attention, not only has not anything been done. I think uh, your response was pretty, I don't agree with that. Um, so, and also, Zach, I think when you submitted that, you got immediate response. Um, Dean Paula followed up with you, you didn't respond. You chose to not to respond. So let's, let's dial back the, the intensity and talk through what Zach's response Right. Was. So Actually, you got, you got a response. Um, yeah, that's telling me that a student has been sanctioned is one thing. Actually, we solving don't the discuss course. Sanctions ever. We, we don't. We can talk to you generally, but we don't give sanction letters. Before. Right. I get that. Actually, received the sanction letter, but um, like we need to we need to actually solve the core of the issue. And when it's all said and done my therapist at the rape crisis center that I eventually went to summarized my experience as describing the university itself like my rapist and she was right uh, on the screen now you'll see some of what I have been through um, I'm going to include snippets of some of the meetings I have recorded in this intro Facebook regardless if it's a private message or not, is a public platform. Right, so there's the um, court system and then there's the uh, In the following videos, uh, I will go into greater detail about the politics and atmosphere at the school, uh, what the school stands for, how poorly it's managed, uh, how unsafe it is in terms of food quality, dorm housing, and student conduct uh, violations and how they're upheld or not upheld by administrators. And ultimately, uh, which it breaks my heart to say, uh, why nobody should go to Oglethorpe. Uh, Oglethorpe University had one of the best academic experiences that I've ever had. Uh, there are wonderful professors there who are very passionate about what they do. They, there are good people there, but the administration and the kinds of students that Oglethorpe attracts create an incredibly toxic environment that has left me permanently scarred. I, I went there to improve my life and to find enlightenment, and then ultimately all I found was pain and torment and I in the end likely any opportunities that I could have gained from the university were robbed from me and my future was ultimately destroyed 
as you can see here, there's lots of comments, uh, and I heard this a lot, that said, you can't change this, just accept it. Um, I was told, just take it a lot. And I want to sort of, I don't know how to word this better or less crassly, but it's exactly what a rapist says during rape. And it isn't just what's metaphorically happening here. They seem to be getting off on the damage they're doing to me. And making videos like this is kind of like me screaming out for help. And I look around everyone else. I was surrounded by Oglethorpe, and it's a lot like the bystander effect. And no one would help me, even as I was being attacked every single day. To explain further, uh, I and for those of you who are familiar with colleges and sexual assault, uh, I did file a Title IX against my attacker, and I filed multiple Title IX against my harassers. Uh, they were ignored. I filed with the Department of Education OCR. They they made the rare choice to open an, an investigation to a private university back in June. Uh, they opened the investigation in June 2017, or 2018, sorry. Um, and uh, that is still ongoing. Uh, but I see very little likelihood that I'll have any kind of justice out of this, what I've been through. Um, I continued to come to class even after I was made homeless. Uh, I went days without food uh, and showers, exposed to the elements. Um, I was mocked for attempting to find resources on campus after I became homeless and to try to find refuge from the stalking and harassment. Uh, any attempt to rebuild my life and find stability, uh, the students who were upset with me for reporting them for student conduct violations and for reporting my sexual assault um, would contact people outside of the university. Any contacts I made continue even to this day to watch anything I post online and continue to harass me and call me crazy uh, and attempt to use gaslighting to uh, squelch my voice. Uh, these videos and any other things that I post online are always review bombed. I attempted to open GoFundMe fundraisers for what I've been through in an attempt to fight this and stay alive, and they review bombed all of those. And there were people who donated money, and I never saw any of it, so I'm sorry you wasted your money. Um, there was one fundraiser to fix a medical complication that I got some of the money from. And it went to preliminary, uh, you know, uh, diagnostics. Uh, but that was it. Um, and I stopped trying to post fundraisers beyond that point. Because uh, it wasn't worth everyone wasting their money if they were just going to get them shut down every single time. They're really relentless, and it's still going to happen. And the lesson that those students have learned from this is that the administration and society at large will protect them from responsibility, so they've learned that they can do this with impunity and will continue to do so. Um, I wasn't kidding when I said I agreed with my therapist that it was like Oglethorpe as a whole was my attacker, because everything I've been through has effectively been like being raped. Um, not just the sexual assault itself, but... Uh, the constant denial of self, the loss of agency, um, the violent destruction of who, of my person. Uh, you know, I, I've been made to feel like less than a human being. Uh, and I paid for the privilege of this treatment, a lot of money in student loans. And I don't think anybody else should have to go through this. So in the next following videos, uh, I will chronicle some of what I've been through in my perspectives 
on the university and the student body and how it's run and the atmosphere. Um, I apologize if it's incoherent. I just turned the microphone and I started talking. Uh, and I've put uh, sub uh, supporting evidence on screen um, after the fact. And included will be recordings of uh, being denied evidence uh, to be submitted um, in my own defense. And full disclosure, I have a Title IX hearing coming up soon on the 11th. Uh, but it's not mine against my attacker. No, ahead of mine, even though I filed first, they're doing my attackers against me. Claiming I sexually harassed her. With poorly written, poorly sourced evidence, and only two witnesses who lied through their teeth. One of them, my academic advisor. Provably, because I recorded all my conversations with my academic advisor, and he made a different witness statement in the previous Title IX against one of my harassers, of which the university has roadblocked me from seeing, and like an attorney, I had to cite the specific law to tell them that they actually had to let me view the report again, and I don't know if I will be able to get the hearing panel to even look at, even though he made a completely contradictory witness statement in a previous Title IX. You know, invalidating everything you said. So, will the hearing panel see this? The respondent on the 11th. Okay. They should see this. So, like, I'm going to formally request they see this, and the first thing I'm going to ask when I get the hearing panel is that they should see this. And I'm not going to stop until they see it. And I, and I met that opportunity. As I did. I totally came. I came and you're doing this on purpose. That's what your triggers are trying to railroad me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to that hearing. I'm going to shove all of this. And like, this is the this, this stuff you couldn't see. This is what they didn't want you to know. Anything that's relevant, as determined by the investigator, is provided. The investigator has the discretion to do that. Yeah, they, and she failed in her bias to include relevant information. I had to write an 86-page response. Right. So that is going to be viewed by the hearing panel. That was your opportunity. Yeah, and I asked for this so I could include it. And then you didn't know the law, didn't know the law, you know, to, uh, and told me I couldn't see it. And then I asked for it. And I asked the department that you sent me to, and they're like, we don't even handle this. They do. It was a confusion on the But because this is a verbal one, so that does go to them, and then it goes through me. That's a mess up, right? You had the opportunity to investigate. And I met that opportunity. And you did not meet with her. I totally came. I came to her door. Oh, I forgot to mention one of the most perverse things about this. Um, so you might think that the upcoming Title Lines I mentioned in the videos are m me versus my attacker. But instead, what the university has chosen to do, despite me filing first um, and the gravity of what's happened and the evidence, is uh, I have to defend myself uh, from a Title IX against my attacker. My attacker's filed against me in, a, in an attempt to deny that the relationship even happened in the first place. And that's, I don't even usually even get to talk about the what that sort of represents, you know, a, a denial that I even existed or mattered, you know, to an individual, which is, clearly the truth that's how narcissistic sociopaths kind of operate clearly didn't matter to my attacker especially in the moment in which i was violated uh but i clearly don't matter at all to the administration at oglethorpe or to a lot of the people on that campus um and uh witnesses have been intimidated most won't come forward uh, my reputation was such so thoroughly trashed by my attacker and the other harassing students that most people see me as the villain. Uh, I had rape fantasy stories written about me, supposedly written by me, that I have proof now that I didn't write that the university refuses to let anybody look at um, because it helps defend them in a future lawsuit and the investigation with the Department of Education. Okay,
So, so what's the occurrence by the pool? It, honestly, I think that's the document I sent to Dr. Fuller, isn't it? I don't know if you did or not, but uh, in in this context is a story that um, it's in here, and it's another piece of evidence that references. Oh, in there. Um, but it's a story that um, the respondent here is saying was the document being referenced in those group chats. Okay. Um, We're gonna have to go over that. And so, and then this context, and so it's in the next paragraph of the yeah. statement is that. Um, he says he knew about it, he knew it to be about was the friend that sent the respondent's document to the status. This is yeah. what he submitted, saying here's where I received this document. That's weird. So, okay. 25 is the best reference back to what the story yeah. But you actually have the document itself? The document itself, yeah. Yeah, so where is that? Because I went off there. 25. But I will note this was not, this document, um, evidence number 25, was not submitted by the respondent. It was submitted by. Um, okay. So 25 is all of this. This isn't the same thing I sent to Dr. Fuller. No. Did you write this? Uh, I don't recall a lot of this. Like some of it's stuff that's in what I wrote, Doctor Fuller, but not not the same thing. At least not that I remember. I'd have to look at the original thing, but it's longer. Take the real occurrence by the pool is different. Yeah. Show the difference between the yeah, but I need to. I'm gonna. Have to, I haven't looked at that thing in forever because I don't like kind of want to. But I guess I'm gonna type it too. There's a lot of details about me in here that I don't think I included in the original story. Screenshot. There's two versions of it, and it's a screenshot of a screenshot. You said you submitted the original to Dr. Fuller? Yeah. So she put forward what you sent her. Right. And we can compare them, because I don't, this is what. Yeah, so if you have you have a document that has the same title, you think? I don't remember if I titled it. See, here's the deal. MLA. Oh, wait. Uh, wait, that's the wrong thing. 
Yeah, the see. original thing. Yeah, why are why why would there need to be two versions of it? Why is one in a completely different file format that's incompatible with .cox, and why is it in MLA format? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can ask Dr. Fuller if you sent the original one to her, she can forward it to you, yeah. so it could be compared. Yeah, I just, this so this document comes up a bit more throughout. Mm -hmm. So I think let's make note of that, and then as we get through, I think we can do that. Right. Uh, but that should be a follow-up question. Um, so Pam Patterson is the person sending that screenshot. Right. So what evidence item number is that? Is that 17? This is evidence number 25. Uh, so is that? Yeah. That is a clarification question we can ask. Okay. Is in, in the account for... And Dr. Fuller can send what she has. With yeah, like the correct one Dr. Fuller has. Like I remember writing this because I'm writing this to Dr. Fuller about what it's like to have PTSD. But the rest of it, and it's numbered in chapters. And there's never like multiple. This is just like a thing that you told me to write. Mm -hmm. Like, why would I have like multiple? <laughs> Digital file. That was submitted? Yeah, yeah, it was submitted digitally. Did you check the metadata on it? Do you, no, you know how to check the metadata on it? No, what are you asking? All right, so basically you take the file, you right click on it, you go to properties, you see who author is, you can see what computer it was written from. Mm -hmm. That data is saved in the file name itself. So you can find out who wrote this and who edited it. But we also have. You sent you sent your exact one to Dr. Fuller. Right. So all we have to do is compare Dr. Fuller's to this. But here's my worry is that the file type has changed to normal .doc. Mm -hmm. One of the advantages of the upgrade to the X .docx is that it has more metadata and it tracks the individual changes. In the old version, it, you can't do the changes commenting. Those those features were not they didn't exist in the nineties. So. Some of the information won't be there, but the author, the author computer, okay. might still be in there. Okay. They, it can be modified. There are like programs that help you modify them. I would doubt that anyone else would know how to do that. It's not like. But it's Dr. Fuller's is different than this. We know it was. Modified. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. We, we, it, it's so not, it can just be compared. It's not that it's modified. It's that who modified it and when yeah, is yeah, possibly yeah. accessible yeah. in the data. Okay. Yes. And uh, if you could look into it, again, this will come up later as well, but uh, the file that you sent, yeah. uh, that would be very helpful. Mm -hmm. So it just, it just lists me. Right. This here, and then it says content period uh, February 24th, 2017, which is about two years ago. Yeah. Um, and it's not, and it's not DOC, so it's not going to have any of the, like, some of it was modified, like actually all this stuff in it. Yeah, it looks like Wait, the computer? Yeah. It's an Oglethorpe terminal. 
that's weird. Why wouldn't it be on my lap? <laughs> I'm happy to print this and, and put this as part of the addendum. Yeah. So this, it's not going to have this detailed paper document in it that we dealt with the last time. All right. Well, if you emailed it to Dr. Fuller, she wouldn't have to send it. You could just forward the email. Oh, send her, send her yeah. yeah. It'll have to be from your, because Dr. Yeah. Fuller, anything you would send her would be looking yeah. at. Yeah. yeah, the computer name would be eligible for if we're using a computer in the domain. But if it were from like my laptop, it would be whatever the computer name in my laptop is, which you can't change once you set it. Um. It's been such a nightmare. And I hope that if you're still listening and if you watch some or all of the videos that follow this, um, that you don't give up hope if you've been through anything like this. I've tried really hard to keep it together and keep fighting. And not for myself, but because there are other victims on that campus too, and there are victims out there that have had their lives ruined like I have. And I've been trying to win a victory against all odds to demonstrate that you can keep winning. It's just, at this point, I... I don't know if that victory is possible. I don't know. But I'm going to keep fighting anyway. And uh, I hope that if you listen to this and watch these videos, uh, that you take away that your voice matters, or that no matter what, you should talk to somebody, tell people your stories, and... Um, try to keep your head up and don't let don't let them win thank you